Hello and welcome to Yesterday's Airlines. Today I am extremely happy to be able to bring you this video which is going to look at the new Phoenix Models Ilyushin IL-96 400 series mould sample. I've not previously worked a lot with Phoenix but Phoenix as a company has changed quite a bit over the last year as I'm sure a lot of you of you have noticed and that has included engaging more with collectors like myself so I'm really pleased to be able to now work with Phoenix looking at some of their new molds as well and I've got to have a shout out for my friend Dan Tung who's been the primary force it seems behind the changes at Phoenix he's working with them very closely looking at what they're releasing and how they're releasing it and he has been one of the main drivers behind the creation of this series 400 mold so thank you very much to him as well now there's been a lot of interest in recent times in soviet and russian types in 400 scale we've just recently had the antonov 26 and 32 coming out from jc wings obviously there's been the tu134 from Panda, TU154 from NG Models, and lots of TU204s and 214s from um, NG and Panda as well. So there's been a lot of interest in Russian and Soviet era aircraft. There's also been some more action with the IL-62 molds at Gemini and JC, and also the return of the IL-86 as well. So lots of cool Soviet and Russian material being produced and the type here the IL-96 is one that Phoenix exclusively has access to because as you can see from the uh, Domodedovo Airlines example here in the image they have the Series 300 mold already and have used it quite well and it's always been a very well thought of mold as well but the Series 400 is very much a different beast not just because it is quite a bit longer so it's really good to see quite an unusual and obscure type like the 96 400 getting a mold in 400 scale after all there have only been depending on how you cut it five or six aircraft actually built of this type so it's got quite limited um, range in terms of the number of models that you can produce but there's still a surprising number and hey you can't really get upset when you're getting such unusual and interesting um, types being made in 400 scale so really pleased to be seeing this mold coming out um, and the first two models as you probably know have already been announced Now, in keeping with the way that I typically do my sample mold reviews, this mold sample has already featured at yesterdaysairlines.com where I have undertaken um, a written review of it, looking at the mold characters, giving loads of images of the sample, um, comparing it to the real thing and looking at other aspects of the R96. So if you haven't had a look at that, then I can strongly suggest you get over there. Obviously this video is a companion piece to that and will show so a lot of, it's a lot of the same stuff, uh, look around the mold in detail, but it's always good to have um, access to all that photographic imagery and that is available at the website. So get on over there and check that out if you haven't already. Also, as always, don't forget to chuck a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Phoenix are just the latest in quite a long line of 400 scale brands that have wanted to work with me, sending me samples for review so I can get feedback from collectors like yourself and also do the reviews and give them ideas. So it's really cool. I mean, I've worked now with NG models, obviously Aviation 400, JC Wings, Fantasy Wings, now Phoenix, um, pretty much all the major players in 400 scale um, outside of Gemini and Aero Classic. So really good. Um, to be engaging with those collectors and using these samples, the manufacturers can really improve their products and get an idea of what's going on in the market. But check out 
yesterdaysairlines.com. As I say, subscribe to the channel here and check me out at Yester Airlines on Instagram and Facebook. But now let's get on and have a closer look at this really cool looking aircraft. So before we get to the 400 version, it's worth just taking a quick look back at the existing IL 96300 mold from Phoenix, which is a really well put together aircraft. Um, without a doubt, one of Phoenix's best ever molds and really probably quite high up there in terms of best ever molds in 400 scale. It shows off the characteristics of the 96 really well in terms of the shape of the nose, this really nice wing join and the engines and the short tubby kind of look that the 96300 has. Obviously, um, the Soviets really hamstrung by the engine technology available to them for civil airliners, basically to get a decent amount of range out of an IL-86, you've got to cut and shut it to make a shorter version, which is fundamentally what the 96 is in many ways, though it's got, you know, little winglets and other upgrades. Um, the mold, yeah, it looks really, really nice. Um, and if you haven't got many of these 96 300s, there are 19 or 20 releases around and they are superb. So I can highly recommend that. Obviously, this 96 400 mold sample we're gonna look at does share a lot of ancestry with this Series 300 mold. In fact, I believe it uses exactly the same wings and engines and pylons and undercarriage. So none of those areas are new. It, I think it also shares the same um, horizontal stabilizers as well. So the primary differences between the 300 and the 400, obviously the fuselage length and the vertical stabilizer, they're the two most obvious differences when you look at the aircraft from outside. So here is the new sample of the 96400. As you can see, it looks very similar to the 300, but like I said, you can see straight away that it is substantially longer, far more like I imagine the aircraft that Ilyushin wanted to build um, before when they came across their issues with uh, having power plants for it. Now, interestingly, this aircraft uses almost the same engines that the 300 uses, but still is a lot longer, and presumably that does have a range issue. When they first built the 96, 400, it was called a 96M and it was going to have Pratt & Whitney engines and in fact there was one made but that project died a death in the 90s partly because of American pressure actually. Um, so what they ended up doing was re-engineering that 96M with Soviet era engines and they called it the 96 400. Um, they then modified it somewhat and have produced what they call the 400T which was primarily produced as a freighter um, and that has seen very limited usage. I think there are four airframes built then. And then recently, a new version, the 96400M, um, has been belatedly got into the air. Um, primarily, it seems, as a reaction to the war in Ukraine and the lack of Western airliners. So the program has been going now, this stretched 96 program, for well over 25 years, actually, but with only five aircraft producing and also the prototype, which is what is actually represented here. Because one of the things about the 96400 T and M that is different to the prototype 96 M and first 400 is this shape of the rear fuselage. As you can see, when you look at a standard 96 300 here, the back of the fuselage is curvy. So this underlying area, underside area here, it curves up to the tail. And that is the same as is shown here on the mold sample, it curves up in a very similar fashion. And that was evident only on that original IL-96M, which is the Pratt engines, which was later re-engined with the Soviet era engines to become the first 400. And that was the only airframe that has had that look. Now, I know that Phoenix are working also on the different underside look that the later production 400Ts and the new 400M have so they will be available on later versions of the mold but the sample they sent me is the sample of that first prototype ion 96 m slash 400 that was produced and as i say only one aircraft made and that frame has actually been scrapped now so that 
is why I have got this sample with that tail underside configuration. But in terms of a lot of the rest of the mold, it shares similarities with the 300 as well. And that is a good thing because that's a great mold, that 300. So starting at the front of the aircraft, it's got that really unique look to it that is shared by the IF-86 and the 96 with this quite long nose cone on the underside here, but quite a pinched and pointy front to it. And you can see that it's got that really well done. As I say, this is sharing that aspect with 300 mold and also the same in terms of the undercarriage. It's got quite a large wheel, but that is in fitting with the type, which does have quite large tires on it. Again, when you move to the middle of the aircraft, it's got that beautiful wing to fuselage fit that the 300 mold also has. It looks really lovely the way that connects in there. And it's got some really quite decent engine pylons here and nice engines too. You could argue maybe the curve of the pylons down to the engine itself is not quite correct, but they still look pretty good. The engines themselves are solid cores, just like on the 300 version, but they're very small fans. That's part of the issue with the, the engines in general. Um, and that generally looks good. As I say, it shares the wing with the IL-96-300 mold. And that in general is a really good wing. The one aspect of it you could perhaps complain about or argue about is the form of the winglets themselves, which I have to say, in keeping with the 300 mold, are a little bit tall and certainly, arguably, not wide enough. I do think that at the top portion here, they should be wider and this rear margin should not be as straight. So it could come up like here and they should be a bit bigger. So that is an issue with the mold, though, to be honest, not a drastic one, I feel. Moving to the rear, we've already talked about the curve on the underside of the rear fuselage here and how that fits for that individual prototype aircraft. You'll also notice that there are two little nodules on the top of the fuselage here. I believe those will be connection points for the large radomes which are fitted to a couple of the IL-96 400s nowadays, the ones in service with the Russian military and the FSB, which is what the KGB is called now. So they will be connection points for those, presumably on aircraft that don't have them, they won't have those little knobs. And this sample doesn't come with those radomes, but at the same time, I have seen some photos of the different types, so they will be produced and fitted. The other thing which is different about the 96400 is this vertical stabilizer, which is substantially shorter and thicker at the top than on the 300. If we put the two tails together, that becomes quite obvious here. You can see how much taller and thinner the Series 300 vertical stab is compared to that on this Series 400. It does look a bit more like an IL-86 style tail, um, but it is substantially different in its height. I think that that generally looks okay as well. And I can't say that I've got really any major issues with the look and feel of this mold, which I think will be an excellent, excellent addition to 400 scale. If I take her off this stand and flip her over, then you can see on the underside how she looks. And again, very similar to the 86 in terms of the undercarriage, you can see we've got these central trucks and the real primary difference, again, length of the fuselage here with these stretches. So I think next step is let's get it up onto the turntable and give you uh, that all round view of the sample.
Okay, so there we have it. That is a quick look around the new Phoenix models IL 96400 sample. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I'm really liking this diversification into more unusual types. I think it's a really great move. I think this is very welcome in the scale and I'm looking forward to seeing the releases. Check out my original post and review for the wish list of what can be made on this. As I say, two models announced so far by Phoenix. The first up will be this sample with the curvy tail wearing the prototype livery and registered RA96000, and that's the aircraft that no longer exists. The second model is Airbridge Cargo, an IL96400 proper, and that one RA96013. But there are at least eight other liveries to be made, including Pole and also uh, Atlant Sawyers, and a couple of government related ones as well. Looking forward to seeing those in the coming months. I think it's a really good example of how a 400 scale manufacturer can make something unique. So well done Phoenix and I'll see you guys next time from yesterday's airlines. Goodbye for now.